Adequate electronic notice of the August 11, 2022 Township Committee meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act and by posting the notice and agenda of the meeting on the Bolton Board the Municipal Building located at 1000 Route 10 in Whippany and by posting notice on the Township's website, HanoverTownship.com by emailing the notice and agenda to the following newspapers, Morris County's Daily Record, the Star Ledger, the Hanover Eagle, and by filing the same with the Township Clerk. I'll sign it. Welcome everyone to the Hanover Township Committee meeting. And we're going to begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, roll call. Roll call. Sorry, it's good thing you did roll call. Committeeman Cahill. Here. Committeeman Francioli. Here. Committeeman Gallagher. Here. Committeeman Malco. Here. And in abundance of caution, Mayor Faramosca has elected to self-quarantine due to a COVID exposure and will not be in attendance this evening. However, he's a participating by via telephone. So we have four members in attendance. And please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor uh, Mahalko. Almighty God, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of Hanover Township. Amen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our first order of business is a letter and communications from Lieutenant Ryan Williams on his retirement effective February 1st, 2022, after 25 years of service to the Hanover Township Police Department. May I please have a motion to accept the letter of retirement? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is the approval of the Township Committee meeting minutes of July 14, 2022. May I have a motion to approve, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now we have on the agenda the public hearing and adoption of ordinance numbers 21-2022, 22-2022, and 23-2022. I'll note for the record that the proof of uh, publication for both or for the ordinances and their notice of introduction appeared in full and the daily record in accordance with the law. Mr. Shamar, would you like to say a few words for that? You're on. If that, that would be okay. Uh, ordinance 21-2022 uh, is the uh, pilot agreement. It's the uh, long-term financial agreement with respect to Park Avenue. And I apologize, Deputy Mayor, for not standing, but I wanted to make sure you can hear me on the microphone. And I have just a short overview because pilots are often, you know, there's a lot of questions sometimes with pilots, so I just want to streamline this. This was part of our affordable housing settlement uh, in order to uh, support the idea that this this project would be would have affordable housing benefits uh, to the township. And so but by way of summary just so everyone recalls there's 210 units that are going to be built here but keep in mind these are uh, designed to be uh, many, many of which are <coughs> going to be uh, higher end type rental units with 60 senior affordable units and the seniors are going to be able to have the amenities of all the high end <coughs> uh, affordable units on the site there's a significant amount of one bedroom units here in fact over 75 percent of the units are one bedroom uh, and there's no what we'd call family or multi-family units with three bedrooms. There's the most bedrooms that we have are two. Uh, we have two bedroom units, there's 50 of them. And there's also uh, some furnished units, more like a long-term extended stay. So in total, you have 210 units, and again, made up of senior affordable units for seniors. All the seniors 
are affordable. They're reduced rentals for those seniors who qualify. And the remaining units are geared more what you'd call, from a planning perspective, bookenders. Those who are starting out and would like a small unit, one or two bedrooms with the amenities, and those who want to downsize later on. That was, that's the design, uh, essentially. But there's an important senior component. And the other part of this project is there's an additional 60 and only 60 affordable units that is to be built at another location, another 60 units to be built. Most likely, uh, just across the street from Town Hall is the site that's really been chosen uh, that we're in negotiations hopefully to uh, acquire for which the developer, uh, per the agreement, is to pay the first million dollars towards the purchase of that property and then build the entire project and manage and maintain it for 30 years. So that's the outlay for uh, Park Avenue. And just by way of summary, the payment in lieu of taxes, what that means uh, to the township. And, and per the agreement, we have a total of 120 senior affordable units. The cost for those units is about $20 million. Uh, and all that's borne by the developer. Uh, and again, that's not a profit side because that's affordable uh, units. They're reduced uh, revenue. The pilot would, agree, would also come with $40,000 in transportation funding uh, to the township each year for what's called a senior shuttle or jitney uh, for senior transportation to supplement whatever uh, the township budget is for senior transportation. Uh, the developer, again, over the life of the agreement is responsible for the management of all of the affordable units. The township also, many towns pay for that management, the qualifying, making sure it's offered uh, to qualified residents and things of that nature. All of that has to be done uh, by the developer. Uh, the amenities of the site, as I mentioned, are available for the seniors, and the town is not responsible, and this is an update to this, uh, an update is that the town would not be responsible for reimbursement for road sanitation or snow removal at the site. And that in itself is about uh, $20,000 a year for what we estimated internally uh, for such services a year for 200 units. And that, again, is something new, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, and next, when we look at the, the total tax structure of this. Annually right now, the property in its present state and it's pretty much been $19,000 a year in total taxes paid to the township, of which 38% goes to the local school board of education, that's $7,400, and the township has $3,700 uh, a year in revenue. With this project, and when we look at the projections, by year five, that's when it's up and running, I didn't want to use year one, by year five, uh, when a you know, project is, is in place, we estimate uh, that the revenue will be about $656,000 in total by the developer of which. So it's not an exempt property. They're paying taxes. This is a payment in lieu of taxes. It's a fixed amount that'll increase based rentals go up, well it's 10% of the rentals for the first 20 years, then the amount that's paid to the township goes up. Based on that, we project that the school, because remember, the governing body adopted an ordinance in 2019 that said any pilot payment that the township receives, the allocation will still go to the school. So out of this pilot at 656, the school would still get $250,000 and the township budget would be the recipient of $124,000. The rest goes um, you know, to essentially the county and, and uh, in the district in, in that way. So, uh, but when we look at this, uh, it's, it's, again, it's being shared to the schools. The pilot says the town can keep 95% of that revenue. And that's where sometimes there's issues with schools and things like that. But again, by law, the township has adopted an ordinance saying we will, in fact, uh, give the school the share it would have received had there not been a pilot. And finally, just going over uh, this project, um, we had, in this case, an independent financial expert review this pilot application uh, to give us an assurance that this is, this is necessary and it's fair to the township. And Dr. Powell, uh, who has, is an economic expert and has evaluated many pilots, I'm just gonna take some quotes from his draft report 
the project is not financially feasible if it is subject to full real estate taxes. And if we include the second senior units, which is potentially across the street, it is even more compelling of a reason for a pilot. So in the first four or five, I'm going to say the first part of the pilot, um, there is a discount from the conventional taxes to the taxes that are being paid by about $100,000 a year. But that changes over time that property depreciates and the assessment would decrease but the pilot and the rents go up so at a certain point it's more of a payment made to the township it exceeds conventional taxes as this goes on uh, so and that's why overall uh, the the structure gets the developer started and gets the project in the ground gets all these senior units which are very important uh, to the township and then in the long run the schools are not hurt in fact uh, we think it minimizes, uh, candidly, this project minimizes school-age children, but it at the same time provides for the school to get a fair share of the uh, pilot. <coughs> uh, the only other thing I want to mention, Deputy Mayor, is uh, with respect to the agreement, it was originally proposed that it would go from 10% uh, after year 10 to 11% from year 10 through year 20. I'm asking for the governing body to okay a change uh, based on uh, a number of factors, including interest rates and, and financing, uh, where year 10 through 20 would still stay at 10%, year 20 would go to 12%, okay? But that 10-year that period would stay at 10%, and that means it's about a $600,000 adjustment. Um, and so to get that back, we've negotiated with the developer an additional $125,000 uh, to be paid up front on the acquisition of land across the street and as I mentioned also a waiver of all municipal services uh, which we've calculated to be approximately five hundred thousand dollars over the life of the agreement so more than will pay itself that one adjustment I'm asking for the amendment um, is so that we are not um, going to be held up with any kind of uh, finance issues to get this done through the courts because remember this is a court settlement and at the same time by having this in place, the township is, is guaranteed that waiver of municipal services, uh, which are not then in any way jeopardized, or do we have to you know, you know, look to that and it moves the project along. That adjustment is 10 years from now. Most of the time when you hear about developers, it's, okay, we need this change now, we'll give you something later. This, uh, this adjustment, and it's a, uh, when you look at it, it's about a $20 million payment over the term. This, Half a million to six hundred thousand dollar adjustment is paid for essentially up front with the municipal services and the hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and the benefit because it's for financing is ten years from now in 2033 um, but besides that again uh, it's not exempt taxes here have to be paid quarterly if they're not paid then the developers in default and the property could put out be put out for tax sales Silvio would do that in a heartbeat if they don't pay because they, and interest accrues on late payments at, at 18 percent uh, if payments are not made on time like any other tax it's so that's the summary mayor unless there's any other questions uh, from the governing body do you want to comment on that to make Fred is um, we've all struggled in New Jersey with the uh, fair share housing obligation and we spent two years in meetings with representatives from the state and with having a pilot we had a problem with the fact that it's going to increase our school population. Maybe not as much as some people say, but maybe a little more than some people say. So when we appropriated the same amount of percentage from the pilot to our schools, I can't tell you how many people came up to me and said, it's a phenomenal what you guys did. Why did you, how did you do it and why did you do it? And I said, to be honest with you, why hasn't it been done in the past? because we're very concerned about police, fire, EMS, DPW, sewer, water, you can go down the list. And schools is always number one, safe streets and good schools. So I'm, I'm just extremely proud, guys, that we took the lead on that. And schools are the most important thing in the world next to safe streets. And uh, Fred, even hearing you report on that and seeing the real numbers, for what it could be, what it could have been if we didn't move, I'm just very happy. And I just wanted to say that publicly. Okay, at this 
there anyone in chambers wishing to be heard regarding ordinance number 21, 22, or 23? Please state your name and address for the record. thank you enough for pointing that out Terry because I omitted that from my presentation all of these numbers including the senior uh, you know fees and things that are paid in addition the township is entitled to the hotel tax revenue uh, as set forth in the law and so yes that's an addition and I thought maybe you would catch one thing I made a, I made a mistake in the presentation so I was smiling because the township's revenue that I had up there, it's even higher uh, because the township share is actually $300,000 a year. It's not 124. Um, it would be 300,000. The county gets 32,000 and the schools get 250. That's the way it would, would be. So I understated the township's number, but I want to just be, so for the record, I'll, I'll change that. But you're right about the hotel tax because that was something central to the negotiations that the governing body said, look, we're not going to waive that. That's got to be paid. And that means that goes through the state, um, where the state receives the rental numbers, and then they pay the township. And so yes, that, that does get paid. I believe that's 3% of the payments that are made. So that is on top of everything else. I'm so glad you said that. Thank you. OK, thank you. And I did see the, the no rab in there, so I appreciate that. Of course. Well, that, i got to say, that, that came from a, a student member of the public that we made sure to include it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Terry. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Motion to close. Second. OK, so now on adoption. May I have a motion on adoption? So moved. May I have a second? Second. And can I, as you say for the record, Deputy Mayor, so that's with the amendment. With the amendment, I apologize. Yes, right, that's uh, okay. Ordinance number 21, including the amendment. To the agreement, yes. To the agreement. Thank, thank you. Okay. Uh, roll call, Committee Mc Cahill. Yes. Committee McFrancioli. Aye. Committee McGallagher. Aye. And Committee Mahalko. Yes. So adopted. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Okay, next on the, uh, Agenda, we have two ordinances for introduction. I'd like to read the titles into the record, please. Ordinance number 24-2022, an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover, the County of Mars, State of New Jersey, amending part two, chapter 218, property maintenance, article five, section 29. Violations and penalties to increase the monetary penalty amount in accordance with the state law. And ordinance number 25-2022, Ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover in the County of Mar, State of New Jersey, amending Part 2, Chapter 166, Land Use and Development, Part 7, Article 40, Section 220, Subsection B, Penalties, to increase the monetary penalty amount in accordance with state law. I'd like to state for the record that Ordinance 24 and 25 and their notices of introduction will be published in full in the daily record in accordance with law. The public hearing will be scheduled for September 8, 2022 at 7 p.m. And if any member of the public would like to speak regarding these ordinances, they will be given the opportunity, opportunity that's a big word, to do so at that evening. May I have a motion to introduce ordinance 24 and 25? Motion. Second. On the roll call. Minnie McGallagher. Aye. Minnie McCahill. Yes. Minnie Min Mahalko. Yes. Minnie Min Francioli. Aye. So introduced. Our next order of business is the approval of resolutions as a consent agenda. Resolution numbers 141 through 159. Does any member of the township committee have a question about any of these items? Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next we have to pay our bills in the amount of $7,327,384.16. May I have a motion to pay the bills? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
And lastly, we have raffle applications RL3361 through RL3364. May I have a motion to pass the raffles? Motion. motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Deputy Mayor and the committee members, that clears the agenda. And I thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much, Christina. Okay. May I have a uh, motion to open the meeting to the public? Motion. Second. Second. Would anybody like to stand up, speak about anything you want at this time? Anything? Eric Kaiser, 16 months here. The question I have is in over a year since Mr. Giorgio announced his retirement, and the candidate that was going to be selected at town. What's the status of the township hiring a township administrator so Mr. Giorgio can enjoy his retirement for the second time? Are you still actively looking or did you put it on the back burner or what's going on with that? I could answer that because we're all very close to Joe and we all speak to Joe quite a bit. Uh, when Joe went into 2022, Joe's position is a year appointment. Joe is appointed for 2022. Joe would like to stay here, and we like Joe being here. But what we discussed with Joe is that when he does want to retire, and he truly believes he's ready to retire, we're going to have a program in place so Joe can mentor and work with the next candidate to bring that candidate up to date on the way Joe does things in the township. So asking me and speaking on behalf of the governing body, because we are pretty close when it comes to very serious issues like this, we respect Joe. We love Joe as a human being. Joe wants to be here. He's still very productive. And ironically, uh, Committee Lynn uh, Cahill and I have been talking quite a bit about succession plans in every department, putting in place a better system to better prepare for the future when somebody does retire so we're not caught flat-footed. So as far as Joe is concerned, there is currently no search to replace Joe because Joe's going to be here really is, it, it, until Joe wants to leave because Joe is still very, very effective. And thank God for Joe. Does that answer your question, Gary? The, uh, Joe is good. Don't get me wrong, he's a lot of work down, he's very knowledgeable, but his retirement is twice. Right. So it's, it's on. That's why I asked the question, is the township after being seeking for the township minister? You may answer the question. Okay, thank you. Okay. The other question I have, there's a lot of chit-chat going around the township about our public parks, and the rubber, and the, 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 the playground area. There's a couple of these park city teams that people are interested in. My question to that is, what's going to be happening with your car synthetic field you want to build? That also has to cover and things that people are starting to complain about. Are you doing environmental impact? Are you looking at research? Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can field that one. Please. Um, yes, obviously that's been addressed or is being addressed. The new systems have more of a cap. There is uh, the Substances they use are not as toxic as they used to be. Years ago, they were, they were bad. But they're used deeper in the product itself, and then there's several layers above that. So that there's no exposure for that layer. Um, also, one of the layers that we're going to put on that field is the final layer is a cork layer, and it actually keeps the field about 20 to 30 degrees cooler. So on days like we've had this past couple, um, it, 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 those fields without that cork um, you, you're getting in the 130, 140 okay. degree. So the cork layer does two things. A, it keeps it cool, and then B, it um, helps cap in addition to the other layers that there will be. So deep, deep down, there is going to be that, that layer that you're speaking of, uh, but it's not nearly like it used to be, you know, years ago. Um, I don't know of any of our playgrounds that have that issue off the top of my head. Uh, I heard that there were some with Board of Ed, but they're addressing it. Uh, yeah, I know specifically B Meadow has that issue, and it's being it's being addressed right now. Uh, they're they're taking a look at it, and I know a lot of the parents are actively, um, you know, pursuing it and, and 
you know, we're working on it. I don't know exactly when and how and all, but uh, that's Board of Ed issue. But uh, yeah, it's being addressed there. And you're right, the uh, fields, I know one that I was working with the project, that was 10 years ago. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. And yeah, be, being a being a coach, yeah, I, I I coach my daughter's team, and there are. That's one of the drawbacks with with the turf fields. Yeah, you you can play more often when it's raining or has rained, uh, but you get a hot hot day like we've had. You got you get, you're either playing early in the morning or late in the evening, and. Uh, and you need to hose them down. You need to, to sprinkle them and, and cool them off. Yeah. So, but that's that's part of it. Yeah, it's being looked at. Absolutely. Thank you, Gary. Anyone else? I was going to say, go once, go twice, Tony. <clears throat> Um, I have a question in reference to the resolutions that were passed tonight. Um, there's one that goes to a couple of members from the school of the OSS in the Internet. It has to do with the drug uh, the field and the extra 25 that yeah. was added to the drug field explain? Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, after a lot of discussion, I mean, we've been talking about this field for years. Um, one of the proposals was to just turf the existing area, but it doesn't, doesn't solve our problem. And one of that problems is we need a full-size field, or at least substantial enough that my 12 and 13-year-old children could play on, play a legal game or a legitimate game. So what we did was expand the scope um, of the design for the field that 25 is to pay Suburban to give us that expanded scope. So what we're looking to do over at Brickyard is to expand it. Rather than just following, football fields are very narrow as opposed to soccer fields. So with a wide soccer field, and I use soccer because that's the largest. Um, so to make sure we don't have the issue that we've had in the past, I think uh, anybody that's lived in town for a while knows the issues we had with the original football field. And first it was going to be a practice field, and everybody said, why did you only build a 60-yard field? And then they made it again. The second time, it was only an 80-yard field because, so finally it took a while to get to the third time and doing it right. So we're going to do this one right. Um, so again, with the recommendation for the rec commission, uh, myself, I'm a st strong supporter of this. We're looking into, and that's where that 25 is, you gotta, you gotta pay suburban, and these fees have gone through the roofs in, in recent years, uh, but to expand that field so we can fit a full-size field in. Uh, so that the original that went to suburban was for the standard with the soccer field that looked like already taken into consideration? No, it went back and forth, and originally we were told it couldn't happen. Uh, but then Suburban took a look and came back and said, well, wait a minute, if we tweak here, tweak there, yes, we can get you that full field. Um, and by full field, we're talking 195 feet wide, uh, I think is what we're, we're shooting for, which is the same soccer field width, although it's a slightly narrow, uh, it's same as the high school. So it's being about the same size as the high school field. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir? Sure. I'm just here with saying, you're saying you're going football, soccer. Oh, multi multi purpose. And it's also what about lacrosse? Yes. Field hockey. So lacrosse. Field hockey, lacrosse. Yep. All yep. 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 Yes. Those are all going to be. Yes. I, I, and we say football and soccer. I, and I use soccer as a reference just because it's the largest. Uh, but it's multi purpose. And that's always been our focus is make sure it's multi purpose so we can really get some usage out of that field. Yeah. Anyone else like to be heard? Can I have a motion to close this portion of the meeting? So moved. Second. Okay, before we go any further, uh, we've had received quite a few phone calls about the increase in our budget. We've um, had to answer a lot of specific questions, and we're, we're all becoming pretty well versed in this. 
because of the detail and the amount of attention our residents have been paying because of the increase. The one term that we use and I used when I was still on the Board of Ed is what is my tax increase all in? K-8, regional high school, municipal, county, fire. Speaking of fire. <laughs> so what we'd like to do tonight, and it's not my style to sit here and hope nobody brings it up, I want to bring it up. So we asked Silvio to put together a couple minute explanation on what all in is, why the taxes went up like they went up, and a little bit of the formula. And so if you could take the floor, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Um, just before I start that, there also were calls about why are tax bills always late going out. Um, Hanover Township introduced our budget early March. We adopted mid-April. We were one of the first towns to adopt. Even though our rate is set, we then wait. Usually the fire department set their rate next. Then we wait for the school boards to set their rate. And finally the county. And then the state certifies everything. We didn't get our certification until the second week of July. We have to prove it out, send everything to the printer, and then wait in line with everybody else getting their tax bill printed. That's the reason why the tax bills never go out early for the first quarter do, uh, that's due. Uh, but then to go into the issue with the taxes, uh, we go to the next screen. Oh, sorry. No problem. The tax bill is made up of several components. We have the county tax rate, which also has their own open space included in it. Then there's our rate, the municipal tax. We have a municipal open space tax. Then there's the two school districts, the local and the regional, and finally the two fire districts. Um, I don't know if you all see by the dollar bill, but Hanover is actually responsible overall for about 23 cents on the dollar of your taxes. Um, our local budget is 18%, and then there's another tax that the state mandates we, we raise. It's called the Reserve for Uncollected Taxes. And what that means is, even though we're the one district that collects all the money, if you don't pay your taxes, we still have to pay the schools, the county, and the fire district your share, even though you don't pay us. So we have to factor into our tax rate basically a cushion to make sure we have enough money to pay the other districts because they don't care whether you pay your taxes or not. We have to forward them their money. Their rates are set. Um, so you can see the schools about the local schools about 36 cents on your dollar. Regional is about 20. The county is about 15 cents. And then the fire districts are about 5 cents. Um, and then this shows it again. And you can see our rate, which is on the bottom, which includes the reserve fund collected taxes, went up 1.95%. The committee, for as long as I've been here, has been under the 2%. Even though there's a, a rule that says you're going to raise your taxes 2%, there are multiple exceptions to that rule. Um, the township doesn't take advantage of that. They make sure, no matter what they do, they're under 2%. Um, some of the others raised it more. Um, the regional school, 8%. County, 8%. These all had a big impact on everybody's taxes. Another reason people had an impact on their taxes, our rate bill base, which we divide our taxes over, went down by some 32 plus million dollars this year. So even if we kept everything the same as last year, your taxes are still going up because we had less of a base to apply the tax over. And that basically is how we come up with your taxes and what are the components of your tax bill. I don't know if I have any questions, Dave. Now, before we close the section out, would anybody like to ask Silvio a specific question about the presentation you just made? Please step to the podium and state your name and address. Jeff Bazio, 21 Washington Avenue. Where was the decrease in rate of was of 32 million? Um, tax appeals. Even though it seems weird because homes are going so sky high in Hanover, the rateable for uh, commercial is based on different um, components, mainly what they can get per square footage for their building. And the commercial aspect has been going uh, down a lot faster than normal. Um, they just can't get the same rent they can for their properties. We have, the county calls this a ratio. 
When we did our reval 10 years ago, our ratio was 100%. What happens is as homes go up and you sell for more, that ratio goes down. The more the ratio goes down, the more of an open invitation is for commercial properties to file an appeal. So even though a homeowner would probably never win an appeal because its assessed value is much lower than its market value, commercial properties have a much greater chance of winning an appeal. And we have anywhere from 35 to 50 commercial properties filing appeals every year. They can't use the same rate? No. They the appeal like a homeowner would? No. There's a whole different component to filing a commercial appeal. And a lot of it has to do with how much they can rent for their square footage. So uh, an example is the property on Columbia Turnpike and Park Avenue, where MetLife used to be. They haven't been able to rent that building for years. So their square footage number that they can charge has dropped dramatically. So when they go to file an appeal, our hands are almost tied going into the appeal. All right. Makes sense. Sorry. Clarification for my own knowledge. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Occupancy had a big difference in the building. I'm sorry? Occupancy. Like, you had people working at a building. You're not, the remote work's got to go there. Does that happen? Gary, can you go to the podium, please? Sorry, Eric Kaiser, 15 months here. Does the um, occupancy of the um, buildings, commercial buildings, have anything off of buildings, people working at home? You mean the, the, the COVID, everybody working home by Zoom? Fred, I think, could you answer that a little better? That, that just goes back to what the demand is out there, and it does ultimately affect the office market because just not as much of a demand. People are scaling down, but not, you know, so, so the answer is yes, it does, the remote. So how have the, uh, how have the hotels been doing? Um, they were about 50 to 60 percent from what they were before COVID. Yeah, um, still that bad? A little. Yeah. We're really getting it from four, even though we have five hotels because the one that isn't really charging real right. fees. Right. And just so people know, that's we get typically we've gotten almost a million dollars from we our hotel tech. Million dollars almost every year. And now we're down. About half. this year we were four seventy five. This year we're probably we may break over five. Yeah. So but that's all. That's off really substantially good. also. And even with the hotels, we don't get any kind of breakdown. We just get an X amount from the state, and they say these are for your hotels. Right. We're not allowed to see any which hotel gives it to us, anything like that. It's just just the money we're giving. You. Ron, Brian, you have a question for yourself? Are you good? I'm oh, good, thank you. So thank you very much. That was very good. And if anybody would like to ask any question any time about this or any other issue, please contact us. Uh, we're going to go to comments from the committee. Guys, we have a lot more work to do. If we can make it two minutes, that'd be great. But I'd like to yield my two minutes to Committee Cahill because Brian has an update, an update, pretty solid update on a meeting that took place with the fire companies and districts and commissioners. I'm starting to understand that breakdown, Brian. Yeah. But please take my two minutes and take No, thank you. I'll keep it under two minutes. I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention that on Monday evening, um, the there was a meeting of the joint districts, District 2 and District 3, uh, met at the Whippany Firehouse uh, for in, in addition to District 2's normal meeting, the, the really the purpose was to have the two commissions, the two boards sitting in the same room while the uh, while their common attorney, Steve Trimbley, could provide a uh, in-depth overview of exactly what uh, would be entailed in, in, in going forward or moving forward with the consolidation. So um, it was very good. He was very thorough. Um, in addition to the two commissions, there were a number of members of the public there as well as uh, uh, volunteer and career firefighters from both districts as well. Uh, the only thing I'd point out is there were some, some great questions, some very, very thought-provoking questions uh, that uh, will pretty much compel the subcommittee that's working on this to sharpen their pencils and, and, uh, and go back out there and, and come up with some, uh, you know, either answers or, or basically to look at a few more things that, that uh, perhaps we hadn't looked at so close. I should also mention that uh, uh, Fred Samaro and Rob were also on the call as well. Um, so basically, yes, it's a matter of going back uh, with the subcommittee, getting back together, uh, talking about some of the issues that were brought up, coming up with some answers. Uh, I would only finish up by stating and reinforcing over and over again that, uh, you know, the purpose of this exercise is to explore whether this is something that's feasible and worthwhile. And if it's not, then we're not going to do it. And if it is, then we're, we're going to pursue it. 
And when I say we, I'm mistaken because it really starts with the two fire commissions. Our job, it, or my job anyway on the subcommittee is just as an observer and to report back to you uh, and to the public in these meetings. Uh, but at this stage of the game, uh, as they move forward, it will require them to agree and put forth a resolution and a request to the Township Committee uh, to put a plan, uh, submit a plan uh, to the state for approval, and that's when, when we would take the ball. So it's a, it's, if they decide to uh, continue or, or pursue this, uh, it's going to take a while. There's a lot of details, there's a lot of work ahead, but I just want everybody to understand that we are still at the stage of is this something we want to do or isn't it? Thank you very much, Brian. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions for Brian? Governor Guy? Mike, take it away. All right, so since he didn't use your two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll move my two minutes to one. You get my two minutes. Yeah. Um, <coughs> just go through the notes. So, 39 days until Hanover Township Day. Mm. Mark it down. Um, we've, it's going to be at uh, Malapartis Park, like it has in the past, going from that September 17th, uh, 1 to 5 p.m. at Malapartis. Uh, rain date is on the 18th. Um, a lot of the same stuff as in the past. We'll have uh, Kitchells have been nice enough to to have their hay ride and when they bring their uh, their horses and cart down. Whippany Park Marching Band is there. Face painting, balloons, inflatables, um, trackless train, soccer darts. Um, Morris County Canine Unit will be there. The Sheriff's Office will be there with the Hope One vehicle, uh, doing photo IDs for the children. Um, there will also be dem karate demonstrations, Sharon School of Dance, cheerleaders. Uh, one other extra thing that we're going to have this year, because of the rain out during uh, July for our uh, for the Brickyard concerts, Five Wheel Drive is going to be playing uh, at Hanover Township Day for us, which is uh, which will be a lot of fun. They're um, you know rock and roll music. Um, Hot dogs, corn on the cob, ice cream, popcorn, all the good stuff, all the good stuff. Uh, so again, mark your calendars, that's uh, September 17th. Um, just an update on B-Meadow Pool. It's been one of our most successful years ever. Um, I could go on all night with all the stuff that they do. They had a cardboard boat regatta on the 23rd. There was 12 boats made out of cardboard and duct tape. Um, one highlight, though, uh, we had the swimming championships at our at our pool this year, and our our, uh, our youngsters did a did a terrific job. Uh, over 12 teams participated, 600 people attended, um, just for the swimming championships. Um, summer camps, we had a great year of summer camps. They're they're starting to close up now as we wind down, um, and we're also getting ready for fall registration. Uh, it's that time of year: soccer, football, cheerleading, um, and then all the fall ball stuff is out there too. So. Um, Get out there. Mark the calendars. You want one of my two minutes, Mike? No, nah, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank great you. Work. Kids are having a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, Ron Beck always does a great job. Very good. Well, very brief. Um, the uh, Just a reminder to the senior citizens, uh, there's been some confusion uh, due to some uh, issues with uh, our old friend COVID, but uh, the meeting of the 17th of this month is on uh, so please know that and uh, there have been some changes in uh, the venue uh, their picnic etc and their ice cream party and whatever but the 17th is still on and uh, that has been approved by our uh, board of health uh, as well so i just want to remind you about that uh, which brings us to the board of health uh, the summer session of the board of health uh, has been somewhat adjourned, but uh, we are monitoring some concerns here. Uh, the BA5 virus, which uh, sort of takes the characteristics of a bad cold or a bad virus, etc., uh, is with us. Uh, and uh, it is quite contagious, but uh, if there's uh, something good to say about it, uh, there have been very few, if any, hospitalizations and any hospitalizations due to it or due to complications, people that have issues already. Uh, but uh, uh, caution to the degree of, uh, and, and again, it's a personal matter of wearing masks or uh, going for your vaccinations or not. Uh, that's your prerogative. The, uh, the other concern that we're watching uh, is the uh, monkey virus. Uh, it is not in any way prevalent here in the uh, Morris County area, uh, we are not concerned with it. The epicenter of the monkey virus 
uh, seems to be Manhattan, and New York is having their issues with it, with vaccinations. Uh, we'll be just monitoring that and watching that as it goes forward. Uh, on uh, any other matters, uh, Marstown Airport, if anybody has been annoyed by it lately, it's because runway uh, 245, which is their main runway, is undergoing some repairs, generally on the weekends, and uh, runway has been closed uh, for that weekend, a day or two. I think that's coming up again this weekend. If that's the case, the traffic pattern changes to more of an, an easterly, westerly pattern, which puts it over more of our, of our Hanover Township. So please bear with it. Uh, but uh, that's it, Mr. Chairman, that I have for the moment. Thank you very much, Ron. I want to say thank you very much to everybody for coming out tonight. I'd like to uh, have a motion to adjourn. Motion. So moved. Second. Adjourn or continue in the back? We're going to continue to uh, adjourn the public session. Right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Got this one now? Nah. Jesus.